Today we will talk about carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Let we start with the site of action, which is the kidney. Here, this is a nephron and it's a functional unit of the kidney. And this is the proximal convoluted tubule and it is responsible of reabsorption approximately 60% to 70% of the water and salts and another molecules. Let's talk about mechanism of action. Here, this is a proximal convoluted tubule cell. This is a luminal side. And this is a interstitium side. And this is the luminal membrane. And this is the basolateral membrane. Sodium bicarbonate reabsorption by the proximal convoluted tubule is initiated by the action of a sodium hydrogen exchanger, NHE3, located in the luminal membrane of the proximal tubule epithelial cell. This transport system allows a sodium ion to enter the cell from the tubular lumen in exchange for a hydrogen ion from inside the cell. The hydrogen ion secreted to the lumen combined with bicarbonate to form carbonic acid, which is rapidly dehydrated to carbon dioxide and water by carbonic anhydrase. Carbon dioxide produced by dehydration of carbonic acid enters the proximal tubule cell by simple diffusion, where it is then rehydrated back to carbonic acid, facilitated by intracellular carbonic anhydrase. After dissociation of carbonic acid, the hydrogen ion is available for transport by the sodium hydrogen exchanger and the HCO3 is transported out of the cell by a basolateral membrane transporter. And the sodium ion that enters the cell will be reabsorbed into interstitium side in exchange with potassium ion through sodium-potassium transporter. In conclusion, sodium bicarbonate reabsorption and hydrogen ion excretion is dependent on carbonic anhydrase enzyme activity. This enzyme can be inhibited by diuretic drugs, called carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, such as acetazolamide.